here we go. Um, I remember as a kid that I've never been a fan of baseball, but if it's on and the game is engaging or if it's an important one or if it's an important rivalry, I'll sit down and watch. That's kind of me. Uh, so, but when I was, I don't know what year it was. I think it was somewhere around 2004. The Yankees and the Red Sox were in the World Series. They were playing for the World Series. And the Yankees went up three games to zero. And they were clearly the favorites as well before that. Well, Red Sox came back and ended up flipping the script on them, going 4-0 and to win. To win out. And everyone was shocked. And I remember, like, how does that happen? How do you, as the number one team, the winningest team and fran franchise in sports history, practically, they have more World Series victories than the next two teams combined. How do they drop a series like that? And remember my dad just saying, that's why you play the game. How is it that the uh, team with like the MVP of the league, like the Carolina Panthers, could have such a bad game against the Denver Broncos to give them, I think it's their fourth Super Bowl, third or fourth. Like how how does that happen? How do the Golden State Warriors get up three nothing to drop four in a row to the Cleveland Cavaliers? And I guess lastly, like. How is it that the New England Patriots go 18 and 0 in a regular season just to drop the last game, the Super Bowl against the last seeded, the 6th seed New York Giants? And how does the number 1 seed in the AFC drop a divisional round game after really two weeks of rest for their key starters because they slept on the week 16 matchup against the Steelers still won it how is it possible that a team like that ends up dropping itself against the last seeded team in their in their uh, conference how does that happen a simple answer that's why we play the game. That's the response of that. You don't know the outcome until the game reaches all zeros on the clock. You just don't know what's going to happen until it happens. If it's true that all the analysts were saying that they were going to get trampled over the, and everything, if that was the truth, the undeniable, irrefutable fact then they wouldn't bother playing the game. What does all this mean? See, working with junior high, high school, college students, one of the main things that I encounter all of the time is the what should I do questions. Who should I date? Who should I marry? What job should I take? What school should I go to, or should I even go to college? Those kind of questions. And a part of it that's woven in that we usually end up getting to sooner or later is if God already knows what I'm going to do, why does it matter? If God already is aware uh, that I'm going to move to that town or I'm going to live in this city or I'm going to take that job, I'm going to marry this girl. If, they're, if God's already aware that I'm going to do this, then it has to be his will, right? Uh, there's no way around it. The answer is maybe, maybe not. See, God gives us a lot of autonomy, gives us a lot of freedom. More in a lot of ways than we're even able to manage on our own. A lot more than we're really equipped to handle. And the freedom that our current economic and political system affords us gives us even more than anyone else in historical reality 
and our abilities to vote for our representatives, the ability to just simply, I mean, if you want to eat anything, doesn't matter what you crave, there's a restaurant within a day's drive that will serve it to you for less than $30. Doesn't matter what it is. You're craving some steak, you're craving some, some prime rib or some, some sushi, some whatever it is. Ice cream, desserts, whatever. Like someone is willing to serve it to you for less than $20, $30. That's a lot of freedom. If you want to go to college, what do you want to specialize on? Do you want history, English, mathematics, astrophysics, quantum physics, literature? What, what do you want to focus on? Because there are so many options available. Do you want to go to Bible school? Because, I mean, everyone knows if you go to Bible school, then that second semester you're going to end up getting married. Well, if you go to this school versus that school, you're going to be in a whole different pool of of single people and if you're gonna meet an entirely different girl than if you went to that school and what if that's not the one God wants you to marry right I think throughout the Bible something that we see a lot more of is the type of person that you should marry the type of worker you should be the type of of employer, the type of master that you should be, the kinds of work ethics, and the kind of, like, just those kind of general principles that we're supposed to follow and be obedient to. You're, you can be a diligent metal worker the same as you can be a diligent librarian. You can be a faithful steward of the knowledge you have in astrophysics as you can in mathematics. You can be a philosopher or a carpenter and do those things responsibly and faithfully and serve God in them, serve your employee reasonably in those things. I think in a lot of ways God has given us the privilege of you can choose and it'll be my will because of the fact that it's more about the fact that we're supposed to serve our masters as unto the Lord, that we are supposed to be faithful stewards of the gifts we've been given. I think most of us intrinsically know what we're good at and the ability or the, the opportunities that that affords. Most of us will not go professional in a sporting field, whether that's baseball, like I've mentioned, football. Most of us will not go professional in those fields. But if you do have the capacity, you know it. I don't know if that's really a question that you have in your mind, if that's the thing. So... And don't just make the decision based off of what you can make the most money at, what the what you can make the most, what you can make the biggest name for yourself as. You make what you do is well, what can I make a reasonable living, provide for the needs that I have, the bills that I have to pay, care for the ones that I love, be generous with a little bit of excess that I am afforded, and. Um, that I'm not, I guess, I, I guess the thing is, and then just kind of watch for the outcome. Watch for the thing that'll happen because sometimes you can see some people come up out of poverty and then they're right back down into it within a short amount of time because they just go hog wild spending money on things they shouldn't be spending on and buying things they shouldn't be buying and just whatever like doing that and they'll win that lottery and then boom back into bankruptcy the next day practically because there are so many things to spend that money on so 
I guess what it comes down to is I don't think God is super concerned about your college major. I don't think that he's super concerned about that. What he is concerned about is where your heart is and the reason that you're pursuing it. And the, he's additionally concerned about whether or not you will be dedicated, devoted to him with the outcomes of it. That's the real win. And that's why a someone can come from the bottom and then arrive wherever you're at. That's the reason why you're given the, the privileges, the priorities, the, the opportunities that you have now is because that's just another opportunity to show responsibility with it to God.